Hello, welcome back. Another week, another video. I'm Steve. I'm your YouTube English teacher trying to teach you the skills you need for the Cambridge exams. We're getting to the end of the year. Next week we'll have a little quiz and another couple of fun videos I've got planned. This week we are looking at a review of the year. We're going to read a short story by a fantastic author that I may have mentioned on this channel before, BJ Novak, writer, director from The Office, you may know him from. And it's a short story called The Best Thing in the World Awards. And it's a nice way of looking back over the year that I do with my students to think about things they like from the year and to do a bit of reading and writing practice, which are obviously popular videos on this channel. Everyone loves reading, don't they? We just can't stop reading. So here's what you need to do. You need to look at the handout, this document which I've posted uh, as a, in the description, a link to. You have got uh, the intro to the story about this imaginary award ceremony for the best thing in the world, such as love, Jesus, Julie Louis-Dreyfus, and so on. And we're starting with some multiple choice questions that I might put around B2 level, because I've tried to make them as difficult as I can, which is what you're going to find on a B2 exam pretty much. So read the handout, do the multiple choice questions, and also do the true and false and justification questions. Now, obviously, this is not on a Cambridge exam anymore. It used to be on the B1 exam, but it's on other many other types of exams, such as the IB, such as the university entrance exams here in Spain. So you need to read the next section and decide if these statements are true or false and include the quote from the text which says why. Or if you're doing this by yourself, underline, highlight the quote, keeping it short, keeping it relevant. Obviously, these are good reading comprehension skills that you're working on for these types of questions as well. Once you've done that, we'll move on to the next part. Well, I'll tell you the answers, then we'll move on to the next part. So go read the handout. Enjoy the story. It's a fantastic story, this imaginary ceremony. And we should find the answers as number one, C, losing gracefully, never won, always nominated. It was close to winning. And something that does better at certain points is going to be peace because it's a finalist during wars. Number three, Jesus didn't win because this vote was split, meaning it was divided. And number four, why do people watch it, even though it's strange? Because love always won, so the result is obvious. That's the best answer to that. The other quick question that we could do to improve our understanding is, can you go back to the text and find these words? Synonyms for these words and opposites for these words. Again, I've... I'm using this with my university preparation class. These are some of the kind of questions you have to do for the reading exam for that. And as always, they are great English practice in general. Go read the text and the words for atheists are non-religious, pretty much. I'm prepared. You're willing to do something. You're prepared to do it. You're happy, available to do it. The opposite of mild is going to be spicy in paragraph two, line one. That's what these strange codes mean. And the opposite of fraud, as a noun, is honesty. For the true or false questions then, as we said, you're finding the justification. It's not the first time he'd been the host for four years. He takes it seriously? No, he laughed it off. He's not going to win the award? True, he wouldn't be nominated. They decided exclusively? No, there's a panel of experts and judges. Did not attract as much attention? True, people skip it. He censored himself, true, because there wasn't much he could say on network television, so he didn't say it. Uh, 11, true, no, false. It was not as good as the ones they usually make, meaning it was only average. It was an average film. Oof, I've made that question too complicated, haven't I? It's an average film, but they normally make better ones. I think that's the point, isn't it? They normally make better ones. Average here being used in a slightly pejorative way, saying it's not so good. And why they're considered boring, that's false. She could explain why they're actually really exciting. Little joke there about how we have to care about these sad things in the ceremonies. Final extra question, find a word that means. I'm giving you four definitions. Look at the second part of the text, find the word that means these definitions. Well, here are the answers. If you watch something, you review it. If it's widely understood, it's unspoken. If it's intended to be kept secret, it's confidential, and the committee of people, we just said, is a panel, and that's where you find them as well. Okay, so you've read it. Now, this is the next part of the text, which is not included in the document, but, well, I don't know. Let's see what we put in the document so we can use it in class for educational purposes, and it's use of English part two. Pause the video, complete the next part of the text using the small grammatical word to complete this. 
obviously using your understanding of what's happening in the story, imagining this award ceremony, what are they saying, what are they talking about, and here come the answers. The final half hour, when probably sounds best, but the others fit. You narrow something down, meaning you have lots of options, and then you narrow it down to less options, fewer options. You return to a place, in this case the stage. You recognize something as something, it's recognized as. Number five is a really good expression. So much for that means I thought it would be good, important, but it wasn't. So much for that. We'll be right back, of course, expression. Uh, number seven, so reassuring, such a contagious calm. And number eight, from the context, we are talking that before he seemed unprofessional, but now he seems calm. Okay, so there's use of English part two, marks out of eight. And a quick use of English part three, use the word, transform it, is the next part of the text. They are saying they are eliminating one of the best things in the world and they are eliminating, here come the answers, number one, what's the thing? Laughter. Number two, typical one, we need an adverb, especially. Number three, victor is a person who wins. The victory should be an easy one, we all know that word. Number four, also pretty easy. Distance is the noun from distant. Number five, father. You could also say further. Further is actually probably better, but in the text it says father, so who are we to argue? And number six, a reminder. And number seven, we are talking about competition. And number eight, how is nothing going to win the best thing in the world? This would be meaningless. That is a nice high level question and a great song by the Magnetic Fields. Search for Magnetic Fields Meaningless if you want to do some good use of English part three practice. It's got lots of Lots of word formation in it. Okay, so that's the next part of the story. Now finish reading the story. Go and find the rest of the story and you'll enjoy it a lot. Because we would like to do, well, once you've read it, what's it all about? It's about nothing, of course. And some very interesting phrases from the story that make you think about how we use language and what it means. Nothing is better than love. Nothing is better than love. Does that mean love is the best? Or does it mean that nothing is better than it? It makes you clever little story this nothing comes close to love again you could think about the idea of nothing coming close or nothing coming close love is only better than nothing it's not great but it's better than nothing nothing can be the best thing in the world and everything else in the world is less than nothing it's less than nothing is really makes you think it's a fun story Here's a summary of the story as a use of English part one with some special focus on prepositions, which you sometimes get on part one. And we should have number one ranging from two contenders such as, meaning like, for example. Number three, the speculation was among viewers. You struggle with something. Oh, number five is a good one, isn't it? It's gonna be despite, because despite something, despite the hints, Love ends up winning, ends up, phrase of verb that we know. It remains unclear why it was disqualified. And there are uncertainties about something, meaning on the, on the topic of their uncertainties about the nature of the competition. That's a quick summary of it. So let's finish with our writing. What do you think should be nominated for the Best Thing in the World Awards? We are focusing on vocal grammar organization for this. And here's a little model answer that I'm giving you. Uh, you don't need to read it here because what I really want to do, as I said, is focus on this grammar, vocab and communication. So good grammar in this answer, things that could be considered. We've already got a relative pronoun, a passive, the correct preposition, relative pronouns. Starting the sentence with a gerund, always impressive when I'm talking about how great roast chicken is. Healthier than, comparative, using the gerund correctly after the verb. Always answering my question clearly that roast chicken is the best thing in the world with some clear points about how I eat it and why it's good, but including all the grammar that you would find on a B2C1 use of English exam that the use you can then use in the writing, as I've said before. Nothing is better than another comparative and you are hungry. Well, in other languages, you don't be hungry. You have hunger, but no, in English, you are hungry. So I'm using the phrases correctly, using the correct verb for it. I'd include that in the grammar. And we can do the same thing for vocab. Roast chicken, specific vocab. You don't need loads of super impressive vocab, just the occasional sprinkle of a nice word, like a pinch of salt, or knowing that the machine that cooks roast chicken is an oven. This elevates your writing a little bit. 
something is rich in nutrients. Obviously, we're talking about food. We should have a little bit of specific vocab, such as carbs. It's a nice expression. And that's probably enough vocab for one bit of writing. You've just sprinkled enough nice little expressions to show that you can talk fluently on this topic. In terms of communication, what I want you to notice here is how every sentence starts linking to the whole piece. So I'm introducing my topic. There are many things. However, and coming back to, so I've said there are lots. However, in my opinion, I'll explore below. Firstly, in fact, in addition, personally, this contributes. This is talking about the different types of food, the carrots and broccoli. And to sum up, so I think, so everything's connected together. Not in a super complicated way. This is fine for, you know, for a B2 piece of writing and even C1, honestly. I mean, if you write perfectly like this and it all makes sense and it's relevant and there's nothing like I'm saying super impressive here, I'm trying to show you that you can do this. You can learn to use a model like this, to use a structure like this and to write a accurate and clear, good piece of writing, which is going to be your homework. Why should one of the following be nominated for the best thing in the world awards? I've tried to make it a bit interesting, but give you an idea. Of course, you can choose your own thing if you want. But some things I came up with that could be considered the best thing in the world. Write 190 words. Because I'm making this B2, because for C1, you probably need a bit more of a complicated question. But the point is to use this plan that I've been using. There are many things for, for me. Firstly, in fact, in addition, personally, like I'm giving you everything. You just need to put in some little ideas about why these things are good and nice and you will have a nice clear correct essay so there we go hope that was useful a bit of reading a bit of writing enjoy the story think back about the things that you appreciate in your life and what's the best thing in the world for you and learn a bit of grammar and hopefully a few skills for the writing thank you